In these two bodies, the etheric and astral bodies, 90% of the cause of the physical disease and troubles is to be found. 4. The mental body, stuck, mind stuck, mind stuck, which an individual human needs to use and impress, constitutes the fourth of the series of mechanisms at the disposal of the soul. At the same time, let it not be forgotten that these four constitute one mechanism. 5% of all modern disease originates in this body or state of consciousness, and here I wish to enunciate the truth of the constant reiteration by certain souls of viewers that the mind is the cause of all sickness is not as yet a fact.
It is interesting to note that the attempt of the scientists to release the energy of the atom is of the same general nature as the work of the exotericist when he endeavors to release the energy of the soul. In this release, the nature of the two art of healing is hidden. Herein lies an occult hint. In the fourth place, we will consider the physical body, its diseases and ills, but only after we have studied the part of man which lies behind and surrounding the dense physical body. In that way we shall work from the world of inner causes to the world of outer happenings. We shall see that all the concerns the health of man originates from. 1. The sum total of forces, healing, desires and occasional mental processes will characterize as the three settler bodies and determine the life and experience of the physical body. 2. The effect upon the physical body of the condition of humanity as a whole. A human being is copyright copyright 1998 Lucas Trust. Four. The treatise on the seven rays. Volume four. Esoteric healing. An integral part of humanity. An organism in a greater organism. Conditions existing in the whole will be reflected in the unit self. And many of the ills from which man suffers today will be effect upon him with conditions existing in the fourth kingdom and nature as a whole. For these he is not held responsible. 3. The effect upon his physical body of the planetary life, which is the expression of the life of the planetary logos, who is an evolving entity. The implications of this are largely beyond our ken, but the effects are discernible. I am not interested primarily in training individuals in order to make them more efficient healers. It is truth healing at which I aim, and it is the work which is done in formation which interests me at this time. But no group of people can work as a unit unless they love and serve each other. The healing energy of the spiritual hierarchy cannot flow through the view that there is this harmony and criticism. The first work, therefore, of any group of viewers is to establish themselves in love and to work towards this unity and understanding. I would like to point out here the need for patience as the healing group integrates and the auras of the group members blend. It takes a little time for people to learn to work together in perfect understanding and their personality, and at the same time to achieve, during their work, a one point of which will produce the needed group rhythm, the rhythm of such unity and intensity that the work can synchronize internally. Aspirants and students as they work along these lines must train themselves to think as a group, and to get to the group without a niggardly or reticent spirit, the best that is in them, and also the fruit of their meditation upon these matters. I might also add that these instructions must be as concise as possible. I shall have to endeavor to put much taken information into a group space, so as to make each sentence convey some real idea and put some real light on the problems which confront a healing group. That which I have to say will fall into two parts. First, you will deal with the general work of healing and teaching, and this will involve the impartation by me as law well, of techniques and methods. Secondly, you will consider the healer and how he can protect himself in the art of healing. Is it not true that the time requisite of all healers is a sympathetic rapport with the patient, so that the healer achieves insight into the trouble and establishes the confidence of the patient? Two words I give you which embody the requirements of all true healers, and to work with you. I think it's 
does everything well, and he must have cracked ahead. A. The power of his own soul. This involves alignment through individual meditation. B. Those whom he can help. This involves a decentralized attitude. Copyright, copyright, 1998, Lucas Trust. 5. A Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4, Esoteric Healing. C. Those energies, when need arises, which will stimulate the patient to the desired activity. This involves a cult knowledge and a trained mind. understand also how to radiate, for the radiation of the soul will stimulate the activity of the soul is the one to be healed and the healing process will be set in motion. The radiation of this mind will illumine the other mind and polarize the will of the patient. The radiation of his astral body, controlled and selfless, will impose a rhythm upon the agitation of the patient's astral body, and so enable the patient to take right action, whilst the radiation of the vital body, working through the splenic center, will aid in organizing the patient's fourth body and so facilitate the work of healing. Therefore, the healer has the duty of rendering himself effective, and according to what he is, will be the effect upon the patient. When a healer works magnetically and radiates his full force to the patient, that patient is enabled more easily to achieve the end desired, which may be complete healing, or it may be the establishing of a state of mind which will enable the patient to live with himself and with his complaint, unhandicapped by the karmic limitations of the body. Or it may be enabling the patient to achieve with joy and facility the right liberation from the body and, through the portal of death, to pass to complete health. Part 1. The basic cause of the disease. This is the problem with which all medical practice down the ages has wrestled. In our present mechanistic age, we have wandered far to the surface of things and away from the partially true point of view of earlier centuries which traced the way back of it, evil humors, bred and festering in the inner subjective life of the patient. In the evolution of knowledge on every hand, we are now on the surface of things, no I do not use the word. Superficial, and the hour has struck in which knowledge can again re-enter the realm of the subjective and transmute itself into wisdom. Whereas today a dawning recognition on the part of the best minds in the medical and allied profession, that in the subjective and hidden attitudes of the mind and of the emotional nature, in the arts and exhibited or expensive sense of 